So I'm gonna go ahead and um, replace my cassette now. You know, there's really no rhyme or reason of which, which step to do first, second. I mean, some stuff's obvious. I just threw my rear derailleur on. I'm gonna throw my cassette on. I already have my shifters on the bike, or at least I got one of them, but um, we'll get to that later. Chain's not on yet. Chain's right here. And so we're going from a 10 speed, and this table's a big mess. I don't recommend working in a mess because a dirty bench is a, has a dirty mind. Go ahead and take the skewer off, get it out of the way. Don't lose your little springs and don't lose your cap. You can screw that on so you don't lose your end cap there. So I picked up this new park tool, park tool uh, FR-5.2H. Let's, let's keep it simple, guys. So basically, it's um, it combines your lock ring tool with this guy. So I'm substituting this for this, and this handle's got some weight to it. I know there's some lighter ones out there, but I'm not too worried about it. I'm not going mobile with this. Uh, I still do need a chain whip, but I'm gonna go ahead and stick that in there. And usually I like to work flat, but this might be, be better for video. And then this one here, this is a shop style chain whip. Um, I gotta start on the right side. I like to engage the curved part first and then go ahead and wrap the chain around. So depending on what style you have, the, the angle might be different, so you might have to come over on this side, but you'll figure it out real quick because basically you need to, this from stopping. And just choose somewhere in the middle. Doesn't have to be, I mean, if you, the more chain wrap you get, the better. The tighter, the better. And then, if you find your chain whip slips a lot, then maybe the chain is just getting worn. And then this tier, keep a nice close V. We've got it, one V here, V here. So we don't want to be way over here. It just makes it harder to get leverage and do this. Of course, we can put this flat or put it on the ground for more better leverage. But yeah, so that's broken free. And you just need that chain whip for dismantle or removal. And then you can take this off as a unit. If not, oh well. So this is a Shimano CSR8000. Uh, I got the biggest tooth they have here, so it's a, an 1132. So the biggest climbing gears are 32. Um, it's not going on a mountain bike. Altegra is still considered road um, slash uh, gravel bike slash CX bike. Basically anything with drop bars. If I wanted a bigger climbing gear, I could, they might offer something in a gravel gravel grinder uh, style, or I could jump over to the mountain stuff, as long as I get the appropriate mountain derailleur. So, garbage, garbage. And this one has a plastic cap we just have to pop out. And we got a thingy. So they got a plastic guide in here. If you do this right, you can just slide everything on all together. Uh, so I'm going for the thin spline, lining that up on top. This is an 11 speed hub. Make sure your hub is adaptable to an 11 speed. If you're jumping to 12, probably gonna need a completely different uh, free hub body, um, whether it's for Shimano or SRAM. So got my thin spline on top. And then if you line this up, boof, I think it's, I don't know where it's at. Oh yeah, big space, there's also a big space. And see if we can do all this correctly. Oh yeah, that was very nice. So very cool, first time I did that. And then you got your lock ring and you got your last gear. And just slide that puppy on. Make sure this last one sits nice and flat. If it's not sitting flat, it'll look like it, but it didn't just engage. So when you go to screw your lock ring on, it may grab one or two threads, but then it pops and it slips, or what it's doing is stripping your, your threads. In this case, this is an aluminum lock ring, so these threads are gonna get messed up first. But um, make sure this is nice and flat. Always, once you land it, so let me do that. So I can't get this last gear to fit on. It's just kind of sliding around, which means I ran out of room, so I'm gonna pull this off. I want to see if there's a spacer that I left on there. Oof, see if we can not mess that up. So, yep. So there's a real thin spacer, maybe a millimeter thick. So once you take that cassette off, I got some writing on here. So 
yours may or may not have writing on here. These are Crank Brothers wheels. It's a newer set, so it is adaptable, um, ready to go for at 11 speed. But again, there's a real thin spacer down at the base. If you don't find it there, it's gonna be at the bottom of your old cassette. But I can pull that off. So that's your thin spacer right there. That's gonna allow me to go to jump to my 11 speed. Go back, see if I can have good luck again. Slide this back on. I don't know how many are loose. This all changes. Sometimes you have two loose gears. Sometimes you have all loose gears. So now I'm gonna go ahead and slide this guy back on. So that looks like it fell into a place, but also I'm gonna try and eyeball it. Yeah, so it fell in, but it didn't quite go to the right notch. Now I believe that's the right notch. Then you wanna look, eyeball it flat ways. So by looking at it this way, you're gonna look at all the gaps. All the gaps should be between each gear should be um, equal. So if this gap is a little higher or even crooked, make your adjustment before you throw your lock ring back on. Yeah, so this this one's got quite a few loose ones. We got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We got three bonded here, two bonded here, and the rest are all loose. And then we got spacers in between. So make sure if you drop this thing, make sure spacers go back. Um, they just gotta go back to place even spaces. So when in doubt, look at the bonded portion, look at the gaps between each gear, and just match that up. And then we're just looking for a notch. There's no way to put this on incorrectly. Just find your one notch that's gonna match, and then everything will just slide back on. And so this one has a built-in spacer, a little hard to see, but it looks like an actual spacer. So I'm not gonna put anything there. And then these here, they do have top and bottom. So look for the number stamp. Usually there's some identification. This tells me it's a 11S, so that's an 11 speed. 18C is probably 18 teeth and something else on there. So, and then you're gonna see some other notching uh, engraved in their machine that's gonna help grab the chain and bring it up to that gear. So let me remove that there. So this right here, a little hard to see, but it's, it's a spacer right there. It's all bonded, molded, so don't need a loose spacer there. And then here we got numbers written here. And then once we get that on, then we have other things to look at. So we have this little etching or, or missing material. It's kind of like a groove and that's where the chain is gonna grab. So going from the smaller gear, it's gonna catch that groove, help throw it up onto this top gear here. So all those things are identifying to let you know that you're going on the correct side. Um, there may be some on the other side, um, so that could fool you as well, but just look, definitely look for numbers. And I got a little small notching on top, got a big wide space there. So actually two tier areas you can go off of. So right there, I just went flat. So these two guys are flat. I cannot fit my screwdriver between these two. So that's telling me right off the bat that I do need a spacer. So I'm gonna take that off. I'm gonna throw this guy on. So these, any direction. Um, these do have an 11S on it, so it is telling me it's for an 11 speed, so very specific as far as that. Uh, but it can go on in any direction, no top or bottom. So now we just created a space. So there's room for the chain. Boom, now we have a gap here. I can stick my screwdriver in there and just continue. So no bump on here. There's no built-in spacer. So I'm gonna throw this guy on and then just continue. And I'm just holding these on my thumb and I can just kind of pull them off and go. So they're all kept in order. And then I'll try and keep my identifying spline up at the top, kind of a 12 o'clock position. Again, we're doing another spacer. Um, and then this one here has a built-in spacer here. It's got some thickness to it right there. So no plastic loose spacer. It has its own. And just find your notch. Boom. Same with this guy. The last one gets a little more difficult because it's not as deep. It's very shallow. That's why this one sometimes, I've found this with the XT cassettes as well, the 11 speeds, that this last one can sit a little funny, which means you're gonna have difficulty in tightening this up. And if you tighten it or impatient, you could strip this one out. So take your time, make sure all this is nice and flat and level. Yeah. And hard to get started with your fingers. So that's where the, uh, the loose tool comes in a little handy. The one with the handle has some weight, so it might throw you off and not allow you to get a nice good balance. Um, messing you up on getting a nice straight thread. So going finger tight. A lot of these have torque recommendations right on the outside. Uh, we got Altegra Shimano. This is lock, has a direction. 
tightening that way clockwise, uh, 40 Nm, so that's 40 Newton meters of tightening. So fairly tight, but you don't want to over tighten this because it has little teeth and ridges that grab and lock. So if you over tighten this, you're gonna have a heck of a time trying to un unloosen it.